Hi, I am Nikki Clements, and welcome to a hopefully quick part two of the music video project. Now, while quick, it is possibly the most important part of the project, and that is finding out whether or not my little laser here can cut out this plastic material. Now, if you've seen my laser in any of my previous videos, it might look a little different, and that is because I finally built an enclosure for it with ventilation so it doesn't smell like death every time that I run it. Now, if the footage for this can ever find its way out of the dead videos folder, maybe you'll actually see a video on it. But for right now, let's just use it. One of the very cool features, this removable laser bed. And this is about the max size that the laser can do. It's about 9.5 by 12. And I made the laser bed out of a steel grate, which means magnets will stick to it which means I can use magnets to hold down whatever I'm lasering. So as you can see, my uh, 12 by 12 sheet of plastic is a little bit too big for the laser bed, so I'm just going to cut it down to size just so it's a better fit. Now there is enough room to fit the entire 12 by 12 sheet into the enclosure if I needed to laser something without cutting it down, but in this case, it'll just make it nicer to work with. that back in the laser. Now this here is actually a little webcam, which actually gives me a crude camera system for aligning the cuts. So I can just pull up the uh, camera app and then I get a live feed of uh, what the laser bed looks like. So I can just snap a picture of the current layout and in this Photoshop document that I've created, I can update it with that most recent snapshot. And now I'm able to, with decent accuracy, place things exactly where I want them on my material. Now my material currently takes up pretty much the entire print surface, so it'd be kind of hard to mess up, but at least this way now I know that I'm not putting anything where I have magnets or just go off the edge or anything like that. So, so now I can bring in the Jingle Bell disc that we made in the first part and just try and put that over in the corner just to save as much material as I can. And I'll turn off my reference, save that out as a JPEG, and save out the entire disk. Now I can fire up the very advanced painter software that runs the Xplotter, and I will choose our notes image and I'll process it using the contour setting which basically takes anything that's black and then just does a laser around the shape so that will in theory cut out all of my little holes and size is a 300 because that means something speed 100 is the slowest it can go speed 5000 is the fast it can go we'll try somewhere 350 and we'll do that twice. I should probably just cut a tiny little test piece just to make sure, but go big or go home. I honestly can't tell if it's doing anything. I mean, it looks cool. So at speed 100, and going over it five times, I am actually able to laser this plastic. It was definitely a challenge. Um, the laser just went right through it, which I'd, I'd always kind of wondered about how in the world you laser something clear, because at least this little laser just goes right through it. I tried uh, spray painting it to see if that would work. It kind of worked, but it also cracked. Painter's tape, actually did work. And I mean, it leaves an okay hole. So I know I can actually use my laser on this material. However, I think I'm going to go to plan B or even plan C and see how those fare before trying the laser again, because it'll probably take a couple hours to actually laser out one of these discs. And I am so glad that I built this enclosure because this stuff does not smell good. And even though the little blurb on Amazon that says it's safe to laser, says it's safe to laser, 
it's still always scary lasering plastics and you know making sure you're not making some kind of poisonous gas. Now I liked the idea of using the laser because even for how cheap it is, it is extremely precise. This machine can do amazing things with uh, cardstock and paper, but I don't really need the disc to be that precise. I just need the position of the holes to be relatively in place and it'll sound good enough. So plan B and C involves these two machines. Plan B being I can use my scan and cut to just cut it out or I could actually 3D print a disc. I'm gonna move on to plan B and throw the file into the scan and cut and see how it can handle that plastic. I'm starting to think I should stop saying this is going to be a short video because every time I do, it totally backfires. So this is my scan and cut. You might remember it from the vinyl cutting video. It's just a uh, X and Y craft cutter. Now it's actually sitting on yet another dead video project. This machine is kind of hard to place because it basically requires an entire foot of space in front of it and behind it. So it can easily take up an entire desk and then whenever you're not using it, that's just space that you want to be using. So if you do use it, the next time you need to use the scan and cut, there's a whole bunch of stuff in front of it so you have to move it away. Anyway, I came up with this tray that slides out, allowing for that the mat to move in and out without falling down. And even better, a shelf for it to go underneath so I can still put stuff on the area behind it. I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. This is saving so much space and allowing complete access to this machine. So let's get one of the tack mats out. Now again, I know that this can cut thicker plastic. These are just some dollar store cutting boards and it had no problem cutting through there, which actually I might even be able to just use something like this to make the discs out of. Although this other plastic is slightly thicker, but uh, I'm going to leave the protective coating on for now, just to see if that makes a difference or not. I'm going to swap out for the purple deep cut blade. Seven, power the machine on, load in a mat. Um, settings, try to cut pressure. It can go up to what? It can go up to nine. Let's just try four. Cut speed, we'll keep it nice and slow. Test file, just do a small circle up in the corner, cut. No. Oof. Okay, blade of 10, max pressure. Well, it finally cut through on that one. Let's maybe take off the uh, protective coating. Well, it got through. You can see that that's its best attempt at a perfect circle, especially at that scale. So that's why this isn't my absolute favorite machine. It's not that precise. It's a pretty wobbly circle. Let's run the full file and see what happens. Why are those so tiny? What is it? Stop, 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 stop. What? No. So the cut itself is the correct scale. It is cutting the circles in the right spot, but it's cutting the circles as like tiny little points. So I'm having, I guess I'm having an issue with the correct scale of these things. And like I said, I don't know if this machine can do this kind of precision. I don't think it can. I think I'm going to try plan C or plan D for 
3D printer. Now before even attempting to 3D print the disc, the process of creating the STL file was problematic. I started off by exporting an SVG file from Illustrator, which I could then insert into Fusion 360. But first, the diameter of the disc is 178 millimeters. Now in Illustrator, it is 178 millimeters, but when I bring it in as an SVG, I have to scale it by 1.33. And so I'm assuming there's some sort of scaling thing that I need to look into when saving to SVG, because when creating the file for the scanning cut, I also had to scale it by 133% to get it to the right size. Anyway, now that it's imported and scaled properly, there are additional weird SVG issues that we have to fix. For some reason, it just likes to randomly move lines. So this sprocket hole here has to be readjusted. So first I have to unfix it, and then I can move it. That one seems to be off. It comes in as locked geometry for some reason, so unfix, move, adjust. And again, that's not just a weird fusion thing. The same thing happened in Canvas Workspace where sprocket holes were just randomly moved. And it's not the same ones that were moved in Fusion 360, so it's just some weird inconsistency with the way that SVG works. Anyway, again, with the sprocket holes readjusted, I'm going to create a second sketch to bring in the notes, again, scaling by 1.33. And I've actually brought these in as text. So these are actual fonts currently. And that seems to do a better job at importing them versus converting them to paths first. Now you can turn text into sketches in Fusion 360. So I can right click on one and choose explode text and now it will act as just another sketch. Unfortunately, there's no way to do it to all of them other than clicking on every single one and choosing explode text, which I don't wanna do. Thankfully, there is another way around that. For now, I'm gonna finish that sketch, go back to the disc and sprockets, and we'll just select it. And then I'm going to extrude it up by maybe 0.8. So there's my disc. And I'll hide the bodies for a second, go to the second sketch. I will select everything, turn the bodies back on. We'll choose extrude, we'll bring it up, make sure it's operation cut, hit okay. And there we go, we actually have our disc created. So that took a little figuring out, but uh, in the end, it wasn't too bad. It's actually pretty easy, just a lot of weird little things and glitches along the way. So let's see if we can actually print this. I'm currently on my umpteenth attempt to try and 3D print it. Um, I really don't have high hopes for it. It uh, turns out to be a surprisingly complex print. You'd think it's just a simple straight up file, but uh, doing all those tiny little movements uh, is proving to be quite a challenge for the printer. So I'm actually back to the laser. Just because the original discs are made of plastic, doesn't necessarily mean I have to make them out of plastic. I may or may not have mentioned that this machine, while very limited in what it can do, is exceptional at cutting cardstock. So I have some 130 pound cardstock, very thick cardboard. So I'm going to try and cut out one of the discs from this and see how it goes. It won't be as durable, it won't last as long, but it should certainly be able to cut it out of this and uh, then we can at least see if it can actually play and if the notes are in the right place and if, uh, if any of this is even worth doing. I'm going to go ahead and throw this in and try and cut it out. We can definitely actually see it cutting now. 
which is good. All right, so while we wait for that to laser, one thing about this enclosure that I want to upgrade pretty much as soon as possible is I want to swap out this current plexiglass window for something laser safe, you know, made out of the same material that these cheap little goggles are made out of, or some sort of film that can go over it. That way, I don't have to bother with wearing these every time. I can actually just look through the top because it is all too easy to forget to put these back on and one look over and pfft, no more vision. And uh, I really like seeing. And even these aren't perfect because you can still see down the bottom and glance at the laser and pfft, really? It's decided to just draw a line all on its own. So that line there is an apparent glitch in the current version of the software, which is basically the only version we're ever gonna get because the company is all but defunct. So that's cool. This is definitely not what we want. The Mac version apparently doesn't have that issue. So when there's something really important, I can always run it off the Mac if necessary. It's just a pain. We will try our best to find out and fix this compatibility issue. And for this, that shouldn't uh, cause too much of an issue at the moment. So I'm just going to keep letting it go and see what we end up with. Seriously, I cannot catch a break. And the 3D print, uh, yeah, that's not doing so well either. Um, I certainly think it's possible to do, but uh, Maybe if I printed it with a raft or something, but I, uh, I think I'm gonna call it quits on this adventure. I don't really feel like wasting any more plastic on it. It's not too bad, the sprockets actually look pretty good, but uh, everything is just, ugh. That's just not working. It is the absolute perfect scale. So I mean, everything is exactly where it's supposed to be. So if it did print, we would have a perfect recreation. It's just far more effort than what I think it's worth at the moment. All the notes line up perfectly, all the sprockets line up perfectly. So close, yet so far. Cool, more random lines. Ugh. Well, it still shouldn't have that much of effect on the overall piece, so I'll just let it keep going. Well, that's something, I guess. I wonder if lasering faster and just more passes would cause less lines. Lower speed will produce more lines. Please increase the engraving speed a little bit to eliminate these unexpected lines. That's just dumb to have to have that as an issue. Anyway, I'll just load up the other file and then we can cut it out. I think we're finally through. Not quite, but should be close enough. And yeah, I'll just finish that off with scissors. I might have some leveling issues, which is annoying, which would make sense, but uh, I might have to shim the uh, laser bed a bit. It looks like it's lasering deep enough on this side, but not quite on the other side. I think I could still punch all these out though. All right, I'll see if I can salvage this and then we can test if it even plays. And that'll let us know. Well, it is the perfect size. Everything lines up. I think my holes might be slightly undersized. We'll see if that makes a difference, but uh, all right, enough. Let's get this in the music box and see if it plays. It lines up on the sprockets. Oh man. Will the poorly lasered paper disc sound any good? Will it play at all? Stay tuned to find out in part three. And you are totally justified in unsubscribing if I ever actually pull crap like that.
No way! That's almost unbelievable. It's perfect! Holy expletives! That is amazing! Oh man, that this honestly makes all this effort worth it. Oh, this is so exciting. I can't believe how well it's working. I could honestly listen to that over and over, somehow knowing that it's my homemade disc playing it makes it so much less annoying. <laughs> oh, this is so exciting. So if I can tweak my settings on the laser, maybe not have some weird lines that it's doing. Oh, this is so cool. Still absolutely blowing me away. But my sincere thank you for watching. Once again, I am Nick D. Clements. If you're wondering, Nick is short for Nicholas, and the D stands for Plan D. Anyway, I'm off to make something. So I'm starting to notice that the laser has a much better time lasering dark materials instead of light materials. Almost like the light materials just reflect the laser right off of it. So I might actually look into getting some 130 pound black cardstock, try and cut that disc out of. However, I went ahead and just cut a disc out of this standard 65 pound cardstock. And I'll tell you what, it plays as good as it looks.